right welcome back guys this is another review on a <laughs> on a nice sort of tackle that we we all use or most of us use i've been looking for a new pod recently i finally retired my embrace after many many years and i never thought that i would to be fair because it's been an absolutely brilliant bit of kit so after scouring the internet and looking at reviews and god knows what else on different things and i don't tend to rush into uh, the first thing that i see i decided to go for a jag pod now jag as we all know i've got a an excellent reputation for build quality and yes you're paying a premium they are what the rolls royce of pods to be fair you know out there i did look at another company um on facebook again the only thing with with that it was the the bugbear with me with the embrace is that I had to put all in the bar, the, the bank stick separately, and it was a lot of faffing to trying to get them all level, and that was the same sort of thing. Was, the, the build quality of them was was absolutely brilliant, you know. It, but again, that was the only thing that swayed me towards getting this particular pod by Jag. Yes, it is very expensive. Um, at the time, I thought, shall I be spending that type of money? But am I going to go out and buy another pod again? Probably not. So, without further ado, that's the bag that it comes in, and it is a proper bag as well, it's got a nice hard bottom. The only downside, and it's not the pod itself, it's actually just the bag that it comes in, which is an absolutely brilliant bit of kit and it's well made, but inside there is no separate compartments to put your bobbins or your swingers in, they're just going loose. That's the only criticism that I've got. I'd like to see a bag done, and I'm sure you could probably get one, but when you're spending the best part of over £400 on a pod, then I think that was a bit of a miss by Jag, to be honest, to actually put separate compartments in, if you know, if that's the way that you are, which I am, to be fair. I don't like having my things in loose and they're all scratched and marked. So down to the pod, let's see it. And this is the Jag RP1. Absolutely sublime bit of kit, to be honest. I was um, like a kid at Christmas when this came through. When I had the phone call to say it was ready to be picked up because I had to order it. They didn't have one in stock. They'd been selling out quite well, I think. Um, so the I think I had to wait maybe two or three weeks for it. Um, but when it finally arrived, wow, absolutely wow. From from bag to bank is literally under ten seconds. You just splay the arms out each side, and that is it done. <laughs> You can't get any quicker than that, to be honest. The central bar obviously does extend, so you know you don't have to have it that sort of length. You can if you want to, I suppose. Um, I've seen some guys that have had it that short. I think more so for bike detection. Um, but I did. I've only used this once, and there was no faffing around with it at all. As I said, the build quality is absolutely brilliant. You cannot fault this pod at all. And I did look at the black one, but I, I'm a bit of a stainless guy, so I do like stainless. And then, of course, you know, you add your own little touches. So I ordered some uh, some red rings and other bits and pieces just to tart it up a little bit more. As I said, raw tarts, it's got to look nice. With this pod, you don't have to go out and buy... If you're fishing a platform, some pods I've seen, when especially when you've had a Savage Tape, move forwards. Um, they're a bit unstable but with this you've got two holes either side you've got one at the top there I don't know if you can see that just there and you've got one at the back where you can literally get some wood screws and screw it down to the platform it's not going to go anywhere which I think is an absolutely brilliant touch so you haven't got to go out and buy anything else the only thing that I did buy which was separate let's pop the pop down with it scratching my coffee table if I can find it he says, which is the uh, the bank stick stabiliser. Now this goes on to the back of the pod on the middle bank stick, and you've literally just got like a thumb screw. You tighten it down, you push it into the ground. So that was an added extra, which I thought mm, I'll, I will get that because some banks are, especially if you're fishing on slopes and stuff like that, that just gives it a little bit of extra support, I suppose. I said I haven't used that yet, but I did buy it. People say that they can't justify spending £450 plus on a rod pod. 
yes, it is a lot of money, but believe you me, you get you get what you pay for these days. I've known guys that have gone out and spent, and a lot of it is only down to budget, you know, and, and what commitments they've got outside of their fishing. But they've most of them have moaned that things have broken, especially cam lock systems and things like that. And I'm not sort of targeting one sort of manufacturer that there's various out there that they're, they're all Chinese made and their quality control is to be desired to be fair they might only guarantee sort of um, you know, look at 10 in every 100 or 10 in every 50 it's probably 10 in every 100 probably um, so things do slip through the net um, a good friend of mine he hadn't had the pod very long and the cam lock system broke on it. He couldn't level it off properly. Uh, we had to sort of cobble it together. It's not what you want to be doing when you, you've got, you know, sort of two, three, four days uh, to your disposal messing around with a pod because it's broken. It's just false economy. He had to go out and buy another pod. And if he kept that money and put the extra money that he had to buy another pod with again, he would have got himself, you know, something that would have, have lasted that little bit longer. The Embrice pod I bought, I had it a, as a deal at the time. I think that was just over 300 quid. As I said, this is the most expensive pod I have ever bought. But to be fair, the, the engineering on this is sublime. This will outlive me and I'm nearly 50. So there, there's no guesswork in it. You've got little markers either side on the legs itself. So you've got markers this side and then you've got markers that side. So you can make sure that each side is perfect that there's no guesswork in it um, at all even sort of getting your buzz bars sorry not your buzz bars your bank sticks um, aligned the way that we want to you can do that you can also take the middle one out go from a three rod rod uh, three rod pod to a two rod pod without any issues whatsoever also the good little thing with this is that when you try to line up your your bite alarms, there is no guesswork in it. You're literally just screwing them on, so you're not putting any stress on the bottom of the plastic. And especially if you've got Neville's, you, you you've literally only got to nip them up and they can crack. Uh, I've had Neville's. Um, I've, I'm sticking there with with me aces. Uh, these are absolutely fantastic alarms. And uh, why I retired them, I do not know. But hey ho, we all uh, we all make mistakes. But I've gone back to me aces. These are still in very very good condition. There's hardly any marks on them. And these are basically like two two in one bite alarm. You've got vibration mode and and uh, roller wheel sensing. But to be fair, a lot of guys look like they've never seen them before um, because obviously they stopped making them. Uh, no longer going unfortunately but if, obviously if you do have, have problems with the with most alarms you can send them off and have, still have them repaired but anyway back to the pod as you can see workmanship on this is absolutely a1 so if you are in the market for a pod that is literally gonna outlive you i highly recommend this rp1 the Jag Nano is an absolutely brilliant bit of kit, which I did also look at, but I went for the RP1, basically because you can just fold everything back up. There's no, no issues with it. And that goes in the bag as it is. That's it. it, it it's done. That, that's it packed away. Is it worth the 450 quid plus that I paid for that? I think it's worth every penny not going down the route of buying something that's um, that's cheap that is false economy to be honest as i said everybody's budget is different and i do understand but my advice is if you're going to buy a pod buy a good one because to be fair they use quite a lot so little cam lock systems they wear they break they're all made from plastic a lot of them this is the reason why i always stick with stainless years and years and years and years ago um, I had to save quite quite a long time and I bought a solar globe trotter. Now, when that first came out, it looked like a piece of scaffolding bar with legs on it. But the the quality of it 
was up there. Everybody wanted one. But the, of again, the price range at that time, £300 plus, was still a lot of money. This is another another step for, forward. The machining on that is the on, on the RP1 is excellent. I cannot fault it one little bit. There is no fault I can find with that pod. The only fault I ever found was with the bag. But there is no single single compartments in it, so you can store your bobbins or your swingers, etc., without them getting bashed around and marked. That's the only downside, and I think Jag did miss a miss a trick out. It wouldn't take much just to put a cup, you know, a, a separate compartment with a couple of Velcro tabs in it. But overall, I am very, very happy. If anybody else has got one of these pods and have had issues, you know, sort of comment below. Uh, do you think it's worth the money? Would you purposely go out and spend £450 plus on a rod pod? Uh, personally, I think it's worth every penny. But I like to hear other people's comments on what they think, on what they what their choices are. Um, as I said, everybody's budget is different. Obviously, they've got young families, etc. And if you only go in every now and again, then yeah, that's fine. That's not. I haven't got a problem with that. I haven't got a problem with the cheaper pods, you know, at all. It's just that the, the build quality is just not there. So if you've got one of these pods or you are aspiring to get one, um, believe you me, you will not be disappointed at all. No fault with the pod at all. I can't. I just can't find one and that's rare these days to be honest the only fault was with the bag so if you're in the market for a rod pod i would check out the jag range it doesn't have to be the rp1 it could be the nano whatever it is even the separate buzz bars and bank sticks they're just another level so they're, they're, they're out going to live most people i think to be honest so if you're uh, if you're in the market check out the rp1 Cheers, guys.